Hey, welcome to Porcelain Carpentry. So today's video, I'm going to be showing how to do uh, door casing and baseboard in a room that's going to be getting carpet. So carpeting goes underneath the trim. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold up the baseboard and the door casing a half an inch. Uh, that's what the carpet guy told me he wanted. So I'm working on this room. You can see I've already trimmed out this with one by four. And the windows are already trimmed out with one by four. So this is just a renovation we're doing. We did the redid the sun floor and now we need to take off all the baseboards and everything. So just put it back together. So I'm gonna go through the whole process, the tools, the materials you need, and how to do it. I'm gonna to try to run through this as quickly as possible. Alright, so I think I've gathered everything we're gonna need here to do this. Um, we'll start with you're probably going to need a compressor and some nail guns. You can nail with hand nails if you don't have these kind of tools. You don't need to go buy them. You can use hand nails, it just takes longer. Um, but if you have this, that's obviously the way to go. Uh, I'm going to use a biscuit joiner. Again, that's not necessary. But I use the biscuit joiner on the top of the door casing um, so that those joints stay good forever. I'll, sh I'll explain that when we get to that. So you're going to need a stud finder so that we know where the studs are, we can nail directly into them. A caulk gun. Once the baseboard's all installed, we'll caulk everything. There's some nail filler, which we're going to need with putty knives to fill all the nail holes. I just thought we're going to need sandpaper too. I'll get some of that. Um, and wood glue. We're going to need wood glue for the biscuit joints on the top of the door and also the outside mitered corner. Uh, hammer and flat bar just got here in case I need it. I've also got my tool belt Which has some nail punches in it in case any of the nails don't set also if you're doing it by hand You're going to need to set the nails with a nail punch So I think that's it um, Materials all we really need to do this is the 1x4 for the door trim and the 1x6 for the baseboard a couple other things you're gonna need a tape measure a pencil if you have one, a combination square, usually they're bigger than this, I've got a mini one, but if you don't have this, you can use a, a tape measure or just your eyeball. Combination square is going to be used to get the reveal on the door. The last two tools you're really going to need is a uh, miter saw, chop saw, um, and a table saw. Um, you don't normally need a table saw for this, but in this case, the door trim goes up against the wall and needs to be ripped a little bit. So normally you could just do this with a miter saw. You could actually do this with like a, a hand saw in one of those little boxes. You just won't get as nice of a uh, cut. First thing you always want to do if you're using nail guns, put a couple drops of oil in them. It helps lubricate all the interior parts. Three drops and I'm done. And they're good for the whole day now. So this house is a little strange. It's 1870. It's kind of like balloon construction. You can see the studs here. Normally there's a bottom plate, but the wall cavities go down past the floor. So um, the walls were just over eight feet tall. So I'm going to add a bunch of little spacers on to the studs to so that we have something solid to nail to here. And that was a new wall put in. So there's a bottom plate there. So I'm just going to add those spacers where all the studs are. I'll do the same thing here. I've got some drywall pieces actually I'm going to use on this side. So I'm using inch and a half nails. I'm going to nail on all these little blocks around the room. And once all the blocks are nailed on, the next thing you want to do because this is going to get carpet, so I don't really care about this floor so much. I want to mark where all of my studs are so I know where to nail. Now I don't even need to use the stud finder other than on the wall that doesn't show the studs here. So for instance on this wall, that's how I'm going to find my studs. And so this is an edge finding stud finder. So when you get to the edge of the stud, it lights up. 
and then make a mark, and then I'll make a center mark off of that. And that'll be where I'll put my block. And you'll see that light just lines right up as it goes over it. All right, so to mark the reveal, I'm gonna set this to 3 16 which is the same as that, and that's how I figure out my reveal everywhere. And I'm just gonna make a mark. There's already marks on here, but it's kinda hard to see them. I'm gonna work my way around the door every, I don't know, every foot or so. Now, without taking the door off the hinges, because the door is in the way of the combination, so I can't really use it here. So what I normally do is I end up just putting the trim pretty much tight um, to the hinge, and then I back it off just a little bit so it's not rubbing. Um, and I, I let that be my guide down there and just eyeball to make sure that the reveal is pretty good all the way down. If you've never done this before, uh, you always do the door trim first because the door trim goes all the way down to the floor and then the baseboard dies into it. So I've got some half inch pieces of plywood because I need to keep this up half an inch because uh, the carpet's got to slide underneath it. And all I'm going to do is set my tape measure on that piece of plywood and measure to the mark that I just made, which is 80 and 13 16 heavy. And I write that on the wall. Not too far over. You, you want to be able to cover where you wrote. <laughs> this side's a little taller. It's 80 and 15 16 light. And then we have to measure the width. Three and a half, three and three eighths, three and seven sixteenths. So I'm going to go cut those two one by four to length. I'm just going to lay it up here and make sure I'm good, I'm right on the mark, so that's good. That one's good too. So I'm just going to measure over. Three and a half minus, and uh, three and three eighths right in the middle, and three and seven sixteenths at the bottom. Which means I'm really not taking off that much to get it in there. Now, after I cut that, this is all going to get caulked in, so uh, it doesn't have to be a perfect line. If this was wood trim, I would be scribing it and doing it a different different way. But for painted trim. You just want to get it close. And so what I'll do is, uh, you could use a straight edge to do this. I'm just going to do it with my finger. I'm going to hold the pencil like that. And as I get towards the edge of this board, because I know I have to get smaller, I'm just going to like, I don't know how to describe it. I'm going to pull the pencil edge back towards my finger so that it creates um, a taper. <laughs> I'll do the same thing on the other side. So I'll go rip that on the table saw. Alright. Fit right in there. First try. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to biscuit joint the top of these and uh, nail them on and then I'll cut the header piece and I'll biscuit joint that and nail that on. So using a biscuit jointer is very easy. You just set this plate on the top of the trim on the face here. And then as you um, push in, this blade comes out and cuts the, uh, whatever you want to call it, the slot. So you want to mark the middle of this, inch and three quarters. And then you're going to line up that line All right, so if you could see this here, it cut this slot in here and we're gonna glue in a biscuit. This is a number 20 biscuit. And what happens is when you glue this in, the glue will get into this, it's very light wood, like a balsa wood or something. And that will actually expand a little bit. 
and then it'll all lock in when I put the other one on top of it. All right, so to nail this on, I'm gonna pull it in, almost touching the uh, hinge, but not quite. Got a little extra space there. And I'm just gonna use an uh, inch and a half finish nails and nail that in really close to the edge so that it nails into the door jam without it blowing out into the door. All right, so now I'm just gonna measure my head casing by putting my tape measure into the wall. 37 and 7 sixteenths. All right, so that's good. And now because I've already got marks here where I measured um, where I marked my centers to biscuit, I'm just going to transfer that mark onto here on both sides and I'll biscuit that this direction. So the biscuits, like I showed earlier, just slide right in there and then this will get glued and everything will get put together all at the same time. I just want to make sure I'm flush on the outside. It's pretty good. Let's get a couple taps down. Make sure it's nice and tight. That looks pretty good. And then the same thing as these trim, we're going to nail it into the jam. Then I'm going to switch to two inch nails. I'll just finish nailing that down all the way. Uh, finish nailing it. Pull my blocks out. All right, that's it for the trim. We gotta let the glue dry. If any uh, drips, just wipe them off. And uh, we're going to do some work to get these seams looking perfect before we paint. I'll get to that later. Now the baseboard's pretty straightforward. I'm going to measure, and because there's a heater here, I'm just going to take it back a little bit. Uh, it's 7 3 8 I'll just make it 7. Alright, so i got the block here. Now there's one stud on the corner here, but there's nothing um, to support it here. So all I'm going to do, uh, I mean... Realistically, if you have construction adhesive, use that, but I don't see the point in buying a whole tube of construction adhesive just for this one little piece. So I'm just going to squirt some caulk back here where there's no stud. And that's just going to help to keep this onto the wall. And we've got my blocks, because remember we're doing carpet, so this has to stay up half an inch. And it's going to go tight to the wall. And I'm going to nail it into the stud. And then just to try to get it to hold it here while this is staying, I'm going to put uh, a nail at an angle into the wall. And once the cock dries, that won't that one go anywhere. And so I'm going to just measure this long wall, and I'll get this one ready to go. So I got that one there. I actually cut it, I cut it a little short intentionally so that I wouldn't be fighting it to get it in. The next one's going to cover over top of it, so you can leave it an eighth inch short, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to start down here and try to get the top of my baseboard flush with the other one. Now, I don't know if there's a tip or a hump on this floor, so all I'm going to do is just put my block in the middle and hold it down to it. Seems like there's a little bit of a dip in the floor or a hump in the board. And then I've already got my marks from earlier. Two nails, top and bottom. I'm going to work my way down all those studs.
Now I'm just going to do the exact same thing on this wall that I just did there. Now here we're just going to measure from the baseboard, I've got 40 and 7 16 and 51, uh, 50 and 13 16. So I've got that board here cut and I just want you to see 40 and 7 16. So it's measured to the short point of the 45 on that outside corner. Same thing on the other side. And we've got a perfect miter right there. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm just gonna take some wood glue. And use my finger to move it around. Put it on pretty heavy, but not too heavy, not too much but you don't want too little either. Now what I like to do is I'll put a, uh, I'll use a brad nailer. So they're shorter, smaller nails. These are inch and a quarters I think I got in there. And I'm just gonna line everything up really good so the top is flush and the corner looks really good. And that, some of that glue is squishing out, which is what I want. Gonna put a brad nail to hold it in place. I'm gonna do the same thing down here. Make it look really good. Give it a little nail. That, that corner should stay good forever. I'm gonna wipe this glue off. So I just got a wet paper towel. I just want to wipe off any of that glue before it dries. Now I'm going to switch back to the 2 inch finish gun and I'm just going to push that tight against the corner and nail it in because there's double studs here or at least, yeah, I think there's doubles Same thing, I'm just going to nail the ends and on my studs Got my last piece of baseboard here. 54 and 8. Okay, so that's everything nailed on. All right, well, thanks for watching, and uh, my next video, when it's ready, I'll put a link right here. It's not ready at the time of posting this, but when it's ready, I'll be showing how I finished this, um, filled the nail holes, and got it ready for paint. You can see that's all right here, but I figured I'd split it into two videos. So that video, when it's ready, will be right here, like I said. So thanks for watching, and uh, if you can, if you wouldn't mind, please like, share and subscribe uh, and when you subscribe bring that little notification bell so it will notify you when i put up new videos that might help you in the future all right so i guess that's it thanks for watching